This is 1950 D. Jefferson nickel in MS67 condition with full steps. Attractively toned nickel with very nice preservation. 1950 was a recession year, and there existed little additional demand for nickels in the territory serviced by the Denver Mint. The entire production of 1950 D. nickels occurred during the summer months, and by the end of the year this issue's low mintage set off a frenzy of hoarding. Thousands of rolls were preserved, making this coin the most widely hoarded issue since the 1938 D. Buffalo type. This full steps gem was sold for $504. Number 15. Here is 1964 Kennedy half dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded in mint state 64 by NGC. Due to size difference between quarter and half dollar planchets, letterings and the day are not fully struck. Liberty is almost totally absent, except some remnants of L and I with weight of 6.1 grams this error coin was sold for $1,140. Number 14. Here is undated Washington quarter struck on a Philippines 5 centimos planchet. Graded as proof 63 brown by PCGS. Normally Philippines 5 centimos planchet is a brass alloy and weighs 2.5 grams. While weight of this error coin 2.54 grams. Date was struck off the flan, but the S mint mark indicates that it was issued by San Francisco branch of the mint. It was sold for $1,320. Number 13. This is 2023 Shield sent with extra V on obverse. Graded as MS68 read by NGC. A rare coin error that occurs when an extra V appears near the rim of the coin, after the initials of engraver VDB. In order to spot this error you'd better use loop or scope. This elusive Shield penny ended up selling for $1,114.86 with buyer's fee. Number 12. Here is 1930s Mercury Dime in MS66 condition. According to NGC, the production of coins slowed considerably in 1930, due to the effects of the Great Depression. Many 1930s dimes remained in vaults for a few years until the demand for fresh coin reappeared in 1934-35. By this time collectors were already alerted to this low mintage issue and preserved a fair number of mint state pieces. 1930s dimes are scarce in the higher circulated grades, but mint state survivors are more plentiful than they would have been under normal economic conditions, and this holds down the value of worn pieces. Gems are not rare, though very few of these have full bands. It was sold for $2,040. Number 11. This is 1943 P. Jefferson nickel struck on a zinc-coated steel scent planchet. Graded as AU55 by PCGS. An originally preserved example, both sides exhibit ruddy pewter and olive gray patina. The strike is flush to the upper left obverse border, lower left reverse border, the right peripheral devices mostly off the planchet, but the base of all four digits and the date discernible to support PCGS's 1943 attribution. Those design elements that are fully present are sharp, and the eye appeal is strong. It was sold for $2,640. Number 10. This is 1964 Lincoln cent struck on a copper nickel clad dime planchet. Graded as extremely fine 45 by PCGS. According to Stax Bowers, Brilliant and Satiny, this attractive silver gray example retains faint traces of mint luster that are best appreciated when viewed with the aid of direct lighting. The wrong planchet feature has resulted in isolated softness of detail both in the centers and around the peripheries, but most major design elements are sharply defined. This is a scarce mint error, and also a particularly curious one since copper nickel planchets were not intended for regular issue production until 1965. In 1964, when this specimen was presumably struck, the Philadelphia Mint would have been using 90% silver planchets for dime coinage. This specimen was sold for $2,880. Number 9. This is 1950 Franklin half dollar in PR67 condition. After an eight-year hiatus, proof coin sales finally resumed in 1950. The hobby had grown considerably during that time, and sales were bound to be much higher than in 1942. A new twist was that buyers could order only complete, five coin sets, rather than selecting a desired quantity by denomination. The packaging remained similar, each coin sealed inside a flexible plastic sleeve, these then stapled together into complete sets that fit within a square, cardboard box. As it had in 1936, the technique of coining brilliant proofs had to be relearned this year. The early emissions were more satiny than brilliant, but with a beauty all their own. Collectors, 
however, wanted coins with fully polished fields, and the proof half dollars of 1950 come both ways. Examples having cameo contrast, with frosted devices set against brilliant fields, form a minority of this coinage. Those revealing sufficient contrast to be certified as ultra cameo are extremely rare, especially in grades above PF65. This PR67 gem was sold for $2,880. Number 8. 1958 D. Lincoln cent in MS67 plus red condition. According to NGC, the coining of cents at Denver dropped below the billion mark for this year as a consequence of a short but sharp nationwide recession. This nonetheless a very common coin in all grades shy of MS67 RD. Most were fairly well made, though ones from worn and chipped dies are common, too. This specimen was sold for $2,587.50 with buyer's fee. Number 7. 1972 Lincoln Cent with Double Die Obverse. According to PCGS, the 1972 Double Die Type 1 can be easily identified as it is strong doubling to the southwest on all four digits on the date. The word liberty is also doubled towards the south. The words in God we trust on the obverse are also strongly doubled towards the east. This variety is very popular. This MS67 Plus gem ended up selling for $3,505.50 with buyer's fee. Number 6. Another error variety. 1965 Roosevelt dime struck on a 90% silver planchet. Graded as AU55 by NGC. This is one of the most popular wrong planchet errors in today's market, a transitional one that involves a 90% planchet that the mint ceased using for regular issue dime production in 1964 with 1,965 dated dies from the first year of regular issue copper nickel clad coinage. Otherwise properly struck, although accuracy does compel us to mention trivial softness of detail along the left obverse and upper reverse borders. Boldly to sharply defined elsewhere with bright brilliant white surfaces that retain appreciable mint luster. It was sold for $5,520. Number 5. Here is Type 1 1936 Lincoln Cent with Double Die Obverse. Graded in Mint State 66 Plus Red by PCGS. Doubling is evident on all obverse letterings and the date. PCGS reported just two specimens in this grade with only single finer. This one was sold for $10,734.75 with buyer's fee. Number 4. Moving on with this 1944 Lincoln cent struck on a zinc-coated steel planchet. Clean error coin with AU details. A significant opportunity for the budget-minded collector to acquire an example of this highly desirable wrong planchet error, the counterpart to the famous 1943 bronze cent. Predominantly silver-gray in appearance, both sides exhibit bold to sharp definition throughout the design. Light hairlining explains the PCGS qualifier, and a few scattered swirls of inactive corrosion are also noted for accuracy, the most prevalent of which are located along the right obverse border. Our multiple offerings in this sale notwithstanding, these are scarce coins, the Denver and San Francisco mint steel cents of the year nothing short of rare. It was sold for $13,200. Number 3. This is rarely encountered 1944 quarter struck on a steel cent planchet. A highlight of the extensive mint error offerings in the John Whitney Walter collection, this piece exhibits a full date and clear mint mark area. The strike is flushed to the lower obverse and upper reverse borders, all design elements that are present exhibiting sharp definition. The obverse is bright and satiny, the reverse a bit darker with light granularity and scattered oxidation. It ended up selling for $16,200. Number 2. Here is 1910S Lincoln sent with repunched mint mark S graded in mint state 67 red by PCGS. A pristine example of this rare variety with vibrant olive gold coloration across each side. The fields are blanketed in a dense, matte-like luster, complementing the more satiny texture of the devices. Incredibly sharp throughout and spared from notable blemishes of any sort. A highly sought-after variety, the 1910 SFS 502 is an underrated variety that sits in the shadow of more famous varieties like the 1958 and 1969 S. However, Advanced Lincoln collectors recognize its true rarity and it is often the jewel in the most specialized collections. It is listed among the top 100 repunched mint mark varieties by both Konica and Wexler, and is listed as the sixth most wanted variety in the complete price guide and cross-reference to Lincoln sent mint mark varieties, 1999, 
by Allen and Wexler. This rare specimen was sold for $19,200. Number 1. And this is 1955 Lincoln sent with double die obverse. Graded in mint state 65 plus red by PCGS. CAC proven superb gem. This is a breathtakingly beautiful, conditionally rare example of perhaps the most popular of all Lincoln scent varieties. Bathed in a blend of medium orange and pale rose colors, the surfaces are fully lustrous with a soft satin finish. The dyes imparted sharp to full definition throughout the design, the all-important obverse doubling readily evident to the naked eye. Generally pristine, a few extremely faint and easily overlooked carbon flecks are all that seem to preclude an even higher grade. This numismatic pinnacle ended up selling for $114,000. Thanks for watching this video. Consider subscribing to our channel for more captivating numismatic content. Have a good one.